It was a very special place for me to work, Sapelo, because it was so isolated. And then being away from the large crowds of people and having the beaches be so open, uh, I really loved that. It's home. I was born and raised here. I love it. I am the island. I think I will always be the island. My children, my grandson now, um, we all Saplo. Located on the Georgia coast, midway between the Savannah and St. Mary's rivers, Sapelo Island is one of the largest of the chain of barrier islands that fringe the South Atlantic seaboard from South Carolina to Northeast Florida. The state-owned island is 16,500 acres and is the fourth largest barrier island on the Georgia coast. Within Sapelo Island, 6,100 acres have been dedicated to the Sapelo Island National Estuarine Research Reserve, or SINER. On December 22, 1976, SINER was designated as the second reserve in the United States, this following the Coastal Management Act of 1972. The key to SINER's success is due to its many partnerships with other agencies, organizations, and institutions, including the University of Georgia Marine Institute, which is located within the reserve, and a special relationship with the local island community, Hog Hammock. The reserve's research, education, training, and stewardship programs focus on the island's natural ecosystems and the cultural and historical resources of Sapelo Island and the greater Altamaha River estuary. It does this by honoring the past and investing in the future through research, education, stewardship, and training. Well, the reserve has been the face of Sapelo for years through its public tour program primarily, um, you know, of, of the 10,000 visitors who come each year, about 80% of those are the, brought here by the reserve. So many people know the island because they've come on a reserve tour. I was with the reserve as an interpretive ranger um, about three and a half years or so, maybe two, three years. Um, I worked with them, Noel Holcomb. Uh, he was a former commissioner for DNR. Um, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed working with them for a number of years and all. It, um, it gave me a sense of um, understanding about the reserves, what it was all about, um, uh, knowledge of helping the children that come down and um, information as far as um, wildlife resources, um, uh, you know, ecology studies that we did and all. I loved working with the kids, definitely. That was my highlight of most of all, was working with the kids. I enjoyed that a lot. And uh, um, you learn a lot. You learn a whole lot, a whole lot. Signer is also investing in the future by educating schools with a 40-seat classroom with audio-visual capabilities and a wet lab equipped with workstations, microscopes, stereoscopes, and aquaria. Students discuss the role of organisms in the salt marsh ecosystems and their importance to human society. They learn how global climate change and water quality can adversely affect the ocean microorganisms and its effect to the human population. The students also get an opportunity to explore the open beach and tidal ecosystems. However, educational and cultural tours of the Sapelo Island are just the tip of the iceberg. When I began here in 1993, we had a very, very minimal program. And then we had an infusion of support from our state agency as well as, as NOAA, uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And we really began to build a program up almost from scratch starting in 1993 to the point where it is now. Uh, our manager at the time, Buddy Sullivan, went to the first national meeting of the reserve system that, that we had been to as a new staff here in the early 90s. He went to Rookery Bay. And when Buddy came back from that meeting, he sat down and he, he just sort of sat there for a little bit, putting his words together. And um, he said, I think I now understand what this system is that we're a part of. Because we all knew Sapelo. We knew what Sapelo meant to us and locally and even statewide, but I don't think we had a really good idea of what this national estuarine 
research reserve system was all about. And I, I think one of the greatest changes or evolutions that the reserve has gone through is becoming a, a really valuable part of that system, not just for the ecosystem protection and the research that we facilitated, but we're contributing partners. We're contributing members of that reserve system. And I think for a long time, we were caught in a very pleasant backwater. I mean, it was, it was enjoyable. We, no one was unsatisfied or dissatisfied with where we were, but the time had come for the reserve to step up and become a member a, a real participating, contributing member of a larger system. The National Estuarine Research Reserve System is actually part of the Coastal Zone Management Act, which was enacted first in 1972, and it basically put together a state coastal program, which is voluntary for the states, and it also allowed for the National Estuarine Research Resist Reserve System, which is a system of state protected areas around the country. We now have 28 sites in the reserve system, all of them have a number of staff, including the managers, and we also have researchers and research coordinators at each of the sites. We have education coordinators. We have many visitor centers where the public can come. We have stewardship coordinators who are doing a lot of the actual resource management. They're doing invasive control. Um, they're monitoring our marshes, those kinds of things. And we also have the coastal training program, which are is a program that actually helps educate decision makers in the local counties and in the local um, coastal cities and towns about what's going on and the science behind what's going on. So th through the reserves programming, through the projects that, that it does both independently with other reserves and with its partners on the island, it serves to bring these, uh, these amazing thinkers to the island to participate in these programs to refine ideas and that's been one of the most exciting things to be involved with is even though you're isolated geographically and perhaps logistically uh, you're not isolated in, in, the, in terms of this thought group this think tank uh, so you get to interact with some people who really are uh, people that shape their day who shape thought who shape actions who shape movements and I think the reserve is largely uh, responsible for creating that environment where people come to the island to, to do those kinds of things. Uh, whether they physically come to the island or whether we participate uh, remotely or through meetings and such, I think that's something really important to Sapelo that's, that comes from the reserve and comes from the involvement in the reserve system. The presence of the signer with DNR managing it made a big difference for us for uh, making it sure that Sapelo would continue as a research base. Um, the highlights of my research career, which were enabled by the fact that I was able to have a long-term research program going, 26 years, uh, were probably the time that Bob Fallon and I, who was my partner, one of my partners, um, were able to develop, devise a method for measuring the productivity of fungi in the marsh. That's a key breakthrough. An estimate of the amount of fungal material, fungal mass, produced in a year in the Sapelo Island National Estuarine Research Reserve was about 6,000 tons. So it's a lot. It makes a big difference. And then if you try to convert that into shrimp, it makes a lot of shrimp too. <laughs> so really the growth of the, of the education program, it happened for lots of reasons. One was the national system was, was there providing the resources and guidance. The DNR was there. They were ready to see the program grow. They were investing resources. They were investing time and full-time positions. And then there was us, the people on the ground, who were willing to, to implement and make it happen. So it was really this just great culmination. And all of these programs, which were funded by NOAA with our federal money, enabled the reserve to grow and expand into the point where it is now, where we offer opportunities for a whole different suite of, uh, of partners and players, participants, uh, school groups, uh, you name it. Uh, we, we have really grown to the point where it's, uh, you know, it's a dynamic program, and it will continue to be. Another key partner Signer has is the local island community known as Hog Hammock. 
Well, the relationship I've seen with the reserves in the community is um, that pe all the members of the reserves have some input as far as helping with community and activities, bringing new studies. Um, when there's a, a project that's being done here around the island, um, the community is involved and we get to see what is being studied on the island and it helps others that's coming over and acknowledge, you know, a lot of knowledge for us to help us too, to see what we have on the island that we might not even know. And also it's, it's really great. It's great that we got to work with the people in the reserves and, um, and it's, it's something that we, I don't think we ever forget. You know, it's, it's just really a family net that really helps one another. If we can help them, they help us. So we try to work together in doing that. And that way we can get a lot accomplished like that too as well. That's the only way we can do it. I think they, uh, they, they're great help when the state bought the island and then they create work and all of the, uh, one guy, C.V. Waters, uh, he passed away now, my guy, but what happened, he didn't hire nobody from the mainland on the refuge if it was somebody in the community uh, was of age to work. And, uh, and that kept the community intact. So they were big help. Uh, um, and if anything they can do to help anybody in, in the community, because it um, wasn't for being, wasn't for the reserve. I was in Philadelphia and the guy, he knew I could run the boat and um, he said, if I come back home, they'll give me a job. So, uh, and uh, between the DNR and the university, I did 35 years. You know, it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here. Talking to you now, I won't be here. I'll probably be up in Philadelphia, you know. So I think they play a, a good part in my life and, and most of the people who are here. And now that I'm in the, the role of island manager, I am seeing more of the subtle changes, especially amongst our partners on the island, like the University of Georgia's Marine Institute, the private lands, the residents of the Hog Hammock community. And, and I think most of the change over the last 20 years that I've seen has really occurred in, in those partners. And we're a small island, everything affects each other, so those changes have implications for us as well. The ways that we've changed is we've expanded our staff, the, the reserve has had the, the good fortune to hire coordinators in the coastal training program, in the stewardship arena. Um, we also hired a full-time research coordinator on Sapelo for the first time in 1997. Well, Sapelo as is, is a, is a uh, aggregate group is going to continue to grow and expand. I think the signer is going to play a key role in that. The University of Georgia Marine Institute, is, the role of that is evolving and has been evolving for the last several years. The, uh, and the signer uh, is in partnership with the UGA Marine Institute, I think is also going to continue to grow. And I think our scientific programs are gonna evolve, our training programs, the education programs, and the stewardship programs. So I envision this program, Sapelo as a whole, evolving uh, uh, to, to even greater heights than it is now with its public access, its research, the dynamic of the education program, and all of the sorts of things that we have in partnership with so many other agencies that work with uh, the reserve in so many different ways. As you can see, Sapelo Island National Estuarine Research Reserve has truly made a lasting impact over the past 40 years. They have successfully done this by honoring the past and investing in the future through research, education, stewardship, and training.